are at our last stop. Sorry, guys, it's sunny, so I'm trying to figure out which way. And windy. And windy. It's always that way. Yes. Yeah, so I'll try to talk loud again. I know the wind whips over that uh, microphone pretty harshly. We'll give it a minute for everybody to yeah they're, jump on. They're unfortunately having to see me right now because I can't see to turn <laughs> to flip the camera. Well, I'm gonna get in the shade a minute and see. And my hair is going nuts, guys. Sorry, this wind is really going. Uh, hi, Steve. Hi, Jay. Here, you don't want to see my face no more. Oh, thank God. There, I got it off me. There's the Amy. Hello, hello. So this is actually Amy and my first time um, back over here. Yeah. Since it has been. Um, Rededicated, I guess, and re-established um, when they were, if you're not sure where we're at, we're at Roswell Road and the new Roswell Road Northwest Corridor Express. Um, so they had to take down this sign and actually I think they re, it looks like they might have redone this sign. It, yeah, it looks a little bit fresher. Yeah. Um, so, the and then we have, Smells yeah, the taco place smells. is open and then there's a Waffle House across the street. Oh Man, goodness. it's like oh, heaven. No, we've not eaten. <laughs> we got the over there good, so. Yeah, it, it yeah. <laughs> uh, people are going to get food out of the taco place, and I'm like, we need some tacos. We need some tacos. Uh, so yeah, we are. Um, we've got we got ten people right now. So hey. So yeah, what this is our uh, last stop of the day. Um, I am not a trooper like Amy and doing 13 stops and going till 8 o'clock at night. That ain't happening. Um, you be devoted but, to, the, to the history, you know? I understand. Uh, um, yes, Tiffany, that's true. Tomorrow is Taco Tuesday, so we'll have to come back tomorrow for Tuesday, uh, Taco Tuesday. And then next Tuesday, it's Cinco de Mayo and Taco Tuesday, so gosh. I'm super excited by that. Um, but yeah, so um, we originally, I turned towards the Waffle House thinking the sign was over there, but no, we are. Um, we think on the, that's actually more of the area, area. over here I think so. the Waffle House where Fray's Gin actually was. So the site that we are at right now is where Leo Frank was lynched. And at the time, this was all farmland. Um, the, this, before the big chicken, that intersection there was just a bunch of farms on either side of. Actually, four lane wasn't there, so no. Uh, so probably yeah. just some two lane. Yeah, we probably should have looked that up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. we're kind of broke there, but um, uh, four lane being 41, uh, which on the other side of the tacos is the big chicken. So yeah, you can't even see it from here. That's so funny. Um, but anyway, so there was a grove of trees on this um, on this farm. And that's where they ended up bringing them. So, in a nutshell. Hold on, Anna, tell us if we're loud enough, please. Because yes. I can't gauge it with the interstate. Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, in a nutshell, uh, Leo is found guilty. And there are just, as you can imagine, a million different details involved in that. Um, it becomes a, you know, they're taking the word of, of Conley. And it comes down to Conley and Leo. And um, Conley actually ends up being a... Witness, he he uh, admits to being involved in it, but he says he didn't do it. He just helped Leo do it, kind of a thing. And so, for giving his um, testimony, he um, was uh, you know getting a um, getting off. Um, his sentence would be lighter. So they used him to convict Leo um, without a whole lot of evidence, to be honest. Um, that would nail down Leo as the prime suspect. So, um, Leo is found guilty. He ends up, um, you know, of course everyone's crying, death penalty, death penalty, you know, let's get him, kind of a thing. And Governor Slayton at the time was actually level-headed, and he looked at all the evidence. He said, you know what, I'm not 100% sure this is right. I'm not 100% sure he actually did this. And he um, apparently, now I don't know a whole lot about Governor um Slayton, I haven't really researched him much, but from this incident alone, if that's all you got to go on, he seems like a good guy because he decided that instead of giving um, Leo the life um, death, 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 sentence, yes. death 
sentence. He got a life sentence. He got life in prison. And so they ended up taking Leo down to the uh, state penitentiary in Milledgeville, Georgia, which I believe, and no, we're not going to Milledgeville, um, but, <laughs> but no. that building, I, either they I thought they tore recently it down, tore it down. I think they very recently tore it down, which is a shame because it was quite a beautiful old brick building, similar to like the school we visited the first thing this morning. Yeah. That kind of a vibe, you know, just abandoned, but old, massive building. Um, brick, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So he was there, and um, he ends up with a life sentence, and that did not satisfy uh, the people of of Atlanta and especially of Cobb County who as we you know just real we just found out at the last stop the connections that Mary Fagan had to her family members here in Cobb County and because it became such a um, national story mm -hmm. and the spotlight was on Marietta during the whole trial and everything um, I think I can only think that a lot of these power players really wanted to keep that momentum going and um, show their true their strong arm to show their true power that they had and so what I was going to do is just kind of name off the list of men who were involved in um, kidnapping Leo Frank from the Millersville Jail and bringing him overnight up here to Marietta and lynching him, taking the law in their own hands. Mm -hmm. And many of these are those who were supposed to be upholding the law um, of the day. So the first one... Um, that we have who and again these are more of your power players they're kind of you know they're getting the funds they're getting you know supplying all the um, you know the gasoline the cars all that kind of stuff yeah, you they're, kinda, they're organizing it all they're getting um, they're making sure that the warden down at the prison you know was looking the other way they were you know, they're, they're doing all the kind of behind the scenes planning for this um, and the first one is former Georgia Governor Joseph M. Brown, um, son of the Georgia Governor Joseph E. Brown, and Joseph E. Brown was governor of Georgia during the Civil War. Joseph M. was from Marietta, um, his son, and became governor, and, um, it was governor, like, right before all of this, like, 1910, yes. 1911 is. He had so. just gotten out of, uh, office. Yeah. So he still had a lot of power, still mm -hmm. had a lot of connections. So there's our first one. He's the one, the other one that's buried in. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's over there. God, that smells so good. Okay. Um, oh, don't, don't let me distract you. I know. Squirrel. Um, okay, so then we have Eugene Herbert Clay, who we just uh, talked about at the Mari Marietta City Cemetery. Um, and again, he was the former Marietta mayor, solicitor general of the Blue Ridge Circuit of Georgia, and future Georgia senator at this time. Um, we have Bowler. Bo Bolin Glover Brumby, who was manager of the Marietta Cheer Company at the time. We have Fred Morris, who was a Georgia congressman, a lawyer, and a scoutmaster for local scouts. And we actually have a um, photo in the museum that it's one of the first photos of all the Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. um, Boy Scout Troop number two, I think yeah. it is, in Marietta. And he's there, like he's prime, um, he was highly, um, Respected, of, yeah, yeah, respected in Marietta um, at the time, and actually, he was a lawyer involved in that Forsyth lynching mm -hmm. a couple years before this as well. Um, so he was involved in a lot of that. Um, John Tucker Dorsey, he was a Georgia congressman, lawyer, and head of the House Penitentiary Penitentiary Committee. You and those big words. Mm -hmm. Dorsey represented the state of Georgia at the coroner's jury that met to investigate the lynching of Frank. And then we have Judge Newton A. Morris, property developer, contractor, and convicted murderer. That's a whole other story we can go into. Uh, were he and Fred related? I don't I forget off the top of my head. Don't I feel know. like they We need to look into him. Um, so those were kind of the, um, the high rollers there. Then you've got the, uh, the worker bees. You've got George Daniel, who, Daniel, uh, he was a jeweler, jeweler, jeweler. on the Marion Square, yep. Daniel Brothers Jewelry. Um, Gordon Gann, lawyer and Cobb County Ordinary of the Probate Court. Gann served as a special attorney for coroner John A. Booth at the coroner's jury investigating the Frank lynching. So he's involved with the, uh, Freight agent at the WNA Railroad. 
and Mayor E.P. Dobbs who loaned their cars for the trip. Remember this is early days of the automobiles. So not everybody had one. Uh, Newton Mays Morris, or they called him Black Newt, supervised the Cobb County convict camp in Chain Gang. So you got some connections there. Yep. George Swanson, the Cobb County Sheriff. William McKinney and George Hicks, who were sheriff's deputies. Cicero Dobbs, who was a taxi driver. Lawrence Haney was a farmer. Yellow Jacket Brown was an electrician. John Augustus, or Gus Benson, he operated the Benson Brothers Mercantile Company, um, which we have a, we have something A Benson, it's like a, a top of a barrel yeah, or something like that, yeah. Okay. Testified at the coroner's jury that though he saw several automobiles near Frey's Gin on the morning of Frey's Lensing, he did not recognize anyone in any of the automobiles. I don't know who any of those people are. I think the chief, was that, wait, which one was that? Which that was one? Gus Benson. I think the chief of police, too, when he came over later, is like, I don't know any don't of these know people. Any people. <laughs> and y'all know how everybody knows everybody in Marietta today. It was even worse back then. I mean, everybody knew everybody. So. Right. Or they were related. Yeah, they're all related. They still are. <laughs> all right. Dr. Benton, farmer, and Mary Fagan's uncle. So yep. she did have a family member involved. Um, someone named Coonshaw. I don't know who don't that know. is. Dr. C. D. Elder, mm -hmm. Emmett and Luther Burton, and Horace Hamby, who was a mule trader. Um, I do have, and then also, um, this is a picture. And I know it's not huge. I don't know if you can see here. That is Sheriff William Frey. Yes, and we um, we actually have a picture of him too uh, in the museum collection. Uh, I didn't bring that out. Uh, it actually has a swastika on the mat. Mm, but that's because the swastika represented something different in the 19 teens that it did, obviously okay. later. Um, but but he um, he's not he he didn't die here in Marietta so. No. He, well, anyways, he, it was his farm. He was sheriff, yes. former sheriff, and it was his farm where the grove was right here where mm -hmm. we're at. Um, and he was the one who set up the noose and uh, put it around Leo's neck and hung him. Um, so you've got all these people involved that, um, again, were power players. Now, I believe, uh, if I read it correctly, their original plan, I've seen two things. One was originally to bring him to Mary Fagan's grave. I've and heard that too. And him there. Yeah. And then the other one was to bring him up into the middle of Marion Square mm -hmm. and lynch him there. But their timing was off. They had some issues along the way. Yeah. And daylight was coming on early in the morning. This was all done overnight. Yeah. And so daylight was coming on and I think they just um, really wanted to do it some place a little bit dark, I guess. And so once daylight came on, they decided, well, Sheriff Ray's over here. Let's just go to his farm. Um, it was all right on Roswell Road. Mm -hmm. They were coming up this direction, I believe. Yeah. Anyways, so um, I don't know if that's the direct route from Millersville or not. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so they get Frank up here, and I'm going to read um, a little excerpt from And the Dead Shall Rise by Steve Oney. Frey's gym was surrounded by a grove of trees, and it was into this small woods that Frank's captors marched him. The doomed man, his bare toes sliding over moist grass, never faltered. According to the most authoritative report, he behaved throughout with a calmness and dignity and an utter lack of panic. After walking 200 feet, the group stopped before a sturdy oak, and someone looped the business end of the manila rope over a high limb. Meantime, the table that would serve as the platform was put into position. While these preparations were being made, Frank apparently asked for and was granted permission to write a note to Lucille, jotting a few sentences in a foreign language some thought to be Yiddish, but was almost certainly German. Then, speaking either in response to a specific question or to himself, the accounts vary, he uttered what amounted to it a final statement. I think more of my wife and my mother than I do of my own life. The remark's authenticity is evidently indisputable. Although, as one reporter noted, in telling this story, it must be remembered that we have not, that we have not Frank's version and never will have it. We have only the lynchers' word for it. Its meaning, however, is ambiguous. 
ambiguous. Ambiguous. I yeah, know, it's late. Yeah. You're doing okay. Whether, as admirers subsequently asserted, Frank was voicing a noble sentiment or, as detractors countered, he was skirting the truth for fear of devastating his family, no one can say. As it had been in the beginning, so it was at the end. With soft morning sunlight dappling down through the late summer foliage, the vigilantes blindfolded Frank, bound his feet together, cinched a khaki cloth around his exposed lower torso, lifted him onto the table, and placed the noose over his head. After agreeing to return Frank's wedding band to Lucille, a man identified it in most reports as simply the leader, pronounced the court's sentence, and kicked over the table. The time was 7.05. The man was Judge Newport. So he dies, and um, word travels quickly, somehow, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, this has happened and where it's happening. And um, soon the crowds came. And so here is... Um, a observation from the Atlanta Journal's Rogers Winter at the time. Um, they swarmed the road from both directions. They seemed to rise up out of the ground so fast they came. The automobiles came careening, recklessly disregarding life and limb of occupants. Horse-drawn vehicles came to a gallop, came at a gallop. Pedestrians came running. The vehicles stopped in the road at the grove and soon packed the road and overflowed into the fields. As the vehicles would stop, their occupants would jump out and run to the grove, bending forward, panting, wild-eyed. Women came, children came, even babes in arms. By 8.30, over 1,000 people had gathered, and scores more were arriving each minute. And somewhere on here it says eventually there ended up being about 3,000 people mm -hmm. from those estimates. Um, the crowd became unruly. The crowd started uh, getting just manic and started tearing mementos from Frank himself, from the tree, the limbs, um, the noose itself, the yeah, noose everything. Itself, everything, until finally at some point um, someone stopped it and took the body down. Um, and so there are many, many different photos of Leo Frank's um, lynching that you can find. We do have some at the museum. Um, the Atlanta History Center has some. You can find them online. There's mm -hmm. the cover of this the book is yeah. one. Um, and a lot of people ask us often why we don't have a permanent exhibit detailing the story. Um, because it's so significant to Marietta's history. And the reality is um, I don't have, well, a couple of things. But one, I don't have a lot of artifacts that um, I can put on display. We're a museum, not a book, you know. And so we need artifacts to put on display. Um, and one of the only things we have are these photos of the lynching. And um, because of the nature, the sensitivity of it, um, you know, of just putting that out there, um, it's something we decided not to do. Um, but it is a story that we do include in other exhibits occasionally. Um, Leo's body was taken down and he was then sent to Atlanta to his wife, delivered to his wife, mm -hmm. and then they took him up to New York. Um, and, oh my gosh, Jay's going to kill me. Jay, are you on there? What's the cemetery? Let's see if he's on there. He was on here, but... Okay, uh, I don't know if he's still on there. I do have some photos, but it'd be hard for you to see it on my phone from there. Um, he was buried in a, in a cemetery in New York, and um, his grave, a friend of ours, friend of the museum, recently went up there back in the fall and visited his grave and sent pictures, and it's not really well kept, unfortunately. I don't know who's in charge of that, but um, yeah, so that's where Leo ended up. As we mentioned earlier, Lucille comes back to Atlanta and continues to live her life here in Atlanta. Um, and so we've got this nice marker here. This one is kind this of... This one, yeah, we noticed this one. This is new. In respectful memory of the thousands across America denied justice by lynching, victims of hatred, prejudice, and ignorance. Between 1880 and 1946, 570 Georgians were lynched. And this was put by the Jewish American Society for Historic Preservation. Rabbi Stephen LaBelle, Temple, Cole, and Mitt. So, uh, j thank you, Jay. It's Mount Carmel in New York. Thank you for chiming in, because your friend forgot. <laughs> um, so... Again, if you're interested in more of this, the, the book that Amy's been talking about and that we've been linking to uh, in The Dead Shall Rise is really, in our opinion, the definitive. Here. Flip it over. Uh, hold on. Let's get us both in here. Oh, golly gee, Willikers, Batman. I can't see. I almost cursed everybody, but I didn't. Uh, 
<laughs> so, um, and The Dead Shall Rise is really like the definitive work. Um, and if you're curious about how other adaptations of this story, uh, the Tony winning is Parade. Parade, yeah. Um, jazz hands. And then, um, their PBS has done a special, I believe, mm -hmm. and then... A couple um, of films, I think. A couple TV of films. Specials. But if you really want to read the best work about it, it is the And the Dead yeah. Shall Rise. Yeah. Um, so... I, how have you enjoyed our journey, Krista? It was fun, actually. We Isn't had a really it? good time. I'm personally glad we didn't do 13 stops. I don't think I could have <laughs> made it. But um, we will be together again Friday afternoon for our normal live uh our weekly live uh, around yeah. marietta marietta city properties yeah we are gonna go over to uh brumby hall and talk about brumby hall and gmi this is gonna be a two-parter any questions oh thank you jay you put a find the grave link thank you uh, so we're gonna do a two-parter um trying to work some magic on the second half we'll see what mm -hmm. happens uh but yeah so join us again friday um, are there any questions yeah, about questions. Frank before we jump off since we are live? Are there yeah. any questions about today, any of the sites? Um, we are not experts on this. We we kind of there is so much information out there about the Frank story that um, it's overwhelming and it's just you can't cover it all in one day. Um, one thing I think that impressed me the most, especially in Atlanta, is the amount of places that now have other significance, you know, sites on it, you know? Like the Ted or you know, Georgia State Stadium and Riches and I mean that's um, kind of interesting. Deborah, you're asking why we are not social distancing. Um, Amy and I have literally been working together this entire time, five days a week. Uh, so social distancing for us would actually mean social distancing from our families because we've actually been together more than um, <laughs> we have with our own families. Um, but also we are in a group of less than 10 um, and we have been making sure to wash our hands um, none of us, neither one of us have been coughing, um, but yet yeah, there's a very valid question. Um, and one so... One of the other reasons, too, we're taking this, probably, um, uh, I guess, chance, is that when we put our mask on, you can't hear us when we're Yeah, I am, I am. So it's, it's a, it's a thing, it's a struggle, but we want to bring you guys the history, so. Uh, but yeah, and then we, we do have a tripod where we can do this, but it's been so windy, too that it's very hard to hear us um, even without the masks. Yeah. So, um, but no, I totally understand. Uh, when we get back in the office, we will, uh, you know, wash our hands and do all that other stuff. So, um, hold on, is Mary Fagan, if Mary Fagan lived in Bellwood, why wasn't she, why was she buried in Marietta again? Okay, so she was buried in Marietta because that's pretty, well one, that's where her paternal grandmother was already buried. Um, and so that plot was, they really lived in that Bellwood area only for about a year, year and a half before her murder. Um, so all of her extended family was yes, from Cobb, Cobb County. County for sure. Yeah. So um, that's why. But um, so that's why she's buried here. Um, her father, I, I believe, is he's not buried there. He's buried in Alabama. So, um, but if there are other questions, since we're about to go off, um, post them either to to any of the videos, and we'll be able to answer. Um, absolutely, not a problem. And um, Thank you for joining you us, us again we on this journey. It. We enjoy these. We hope you guys are too. And if you do share it, please help us get the you know the stories out there. To it's not only about us and promoting us at all. It's about remembering history and sharing these stories that you can't always tell in an exhibit. Did everyone who, who actually? No, nobody really knows who actually did it. Unfortunately, uh, no. However, we should notice that um, or note that uh, Frank on. was pardoned posthumously in 1986 so yeah if you so see that it sign. didn't it didn't go so far as to say he was innocent what it did was it said we don't have enough evidence to say he's guilty so you, there's you know unless the Atlanta Police Department has a stash of evidence somewhere that they can revisit I don't know I don't think so. Um, we'll have to ask our close, no. close friends and relatives to open that case back up um, but yeah no um, <laughs> yeah he's not gonna do that um, so we will um, leave any questions, comments. All of these will be available on our YouTube page as well. Let me circle back to us. Our YouTube page as well. We did reach 10 subscribers over the weekend. Yes. Come on, 20 by the end of the week. Woo. Um, so you guys can watch these on YouTube as well um, and, and in order. But again, leave us any questions 
um, and we'll see them and we'll answer them the best we can and we'll see you guys but also before I forget like the museum page subscribe to our YouTube like our Instagram page as well and we'll see you guys on Friday thank you Bye.